Well, good day to you, and welcome to our garden here in Moraga. I'm Al Kite, and we're doing a series of short videos on dimensions of beauty in the California native plant garden. And usually we've been going two months at a time and, and looking at the beauty that occurs at different times of year. Today we're just going to concentrate on one month, the month of May, because May is the time in which we have peak bloom in our garden. So our topic is the beauty of peak bloom. And you might ask, well, is there just one peak to the blooms? Well, I think there's a number of peaks. Some offer different things than others. In, in uh, about the middle of February, I think we have our first peak bloom in the garden. And it's because two plants come together and, and have their maximum floral display at the same time. One is the manzanitas, the other is the chaparral currant. And when they bloom together, uh, it kind of kicks off the, the color in the garden for the year and, it, and uh, the flowering season, as it were, and provides nectar for the big bees. Our second blooming peak really comes toward the end of March, and that's really two other plants that come together in Kia, the California lilac, the ceanothus, and the California poppy. So we have a lot of blue and gold kicking off the second peak bloom and tagging along with that are the, uh, the, the white monkey flowers and the sulfur buckwheats and the iris. So that second peak bloom is the, is the peak that brings color to the garden and probably the most vibrant of the peaks. So what is it that would make the bloom, the third peak, the one that occurs in early May, even more, even better? Well, to me, there's one thing lacking in that second peak bloom, and that is that two colors in the spectrum are still missing as I, as I look across the ground. One is the blue, and the second is pink. Uh, and, and those two plants that provide that for me come in early May. One is the foothill pensimon that gives blue, and the meadow onion that brings pink. And so at that point in time, I have every single color represented throughout the garden. And uh, so this is what I consider peak bloom. Be why? Because this is the time of year that I'd most like to have people come and visit the garden. Fortunately, it, that timing coincides with the bringing back the native tour. Now, what other plants uh, start blooming in May for us? Well, in the, in the colors of red, you get uh, a, a bush form. You have the spice bush, Calicanthus occidentalis. The spice bush, of course, is, a, is the plant that you smell it, and it smells kind of like wine or a fruit of some kind, an old winery. <laughs> and uh, the, the, the bloom in uh, blue, of course, we talked about the foothill penstemon, but we also get brodea, uh, what we call blue dicks. And that's a nice form of blue. And, of course, we, if you had a bunch of annuals, you'd get even, even more blue-blooming plants because they love to come forth in May. In the bushes, you, you have the uh, Cleveland sage blooming. And you all, even the Yerba Santa has a bluish tinge to the bloom. Uh, in purple, we have the woolly blue curls and the verbena already blooming in bush form. But now we get a ground cover of uh, purple bloom uh, called roving sailor that Pete Bayou introduced me to a few years ago. In uh, pink, uh, joining the meadow onion, or this checker bloom, a wonderful pink, low-blooming plant that attracts butterflies. And in the bushes, uh, I put in some plants that I've seen along the Sierra mountain streams called the mountain spirea. Um, in uh, yellows, the only yellow bloom that starts in May is really my a faint yellow in my elderberry blossoms, elderberry tree. And then in white, we have... a. Uh, Yerba manza on the ground, and we have uh, uh, mock orange, which is a beautiful blooming plant. The last of our ceanothus, and one of my favorites, uh, blooms this time of year, and that's the deer brush, uh, ceanothus into Jeremus. And in the front, we in the chaparral, we have chemise blooming, and we have uh, the, the matilaha, the matilaha poppy. <laughs> And uh, so we have a number of plants that bloom in May. So why is, this, why is the second half of May not as good 
in bloom as the first half. Well, the poppies have been going for a couple of months now. Despite my best deadheading efforts, uh, there's, there's fewer poppy blooms. They'll still go on for a while, but there's just not as uh, vibrant, and nor as many of them. And the meadow onion, which gave us that nice pink, is already starting to fade. Peak bloom is a good time to, des to design your color distribution for the following year. And you do that by taking your, your views of your peak bloom and, and taking a picture of it and looking at it and saying, well, how could I make this even more beautiful next year? So you can, uh, in this picture, for example, you can add, I think, add white and some orange toward the middle of the picture and off to the lower right, some pink and maybe a little more blue and, and make it even a, a, a more interesting color display the following year. And when you put in uh, plants like this, put in two or three, not just one, because the plants are small that first year and you do want to see a splash of color in these areas. Uh, I learned to put in three plants instead of one some years back. And I, I planted one native plant in an area where I thought the, the uh, guide, guides would tell me, this is exactly in your yard where this plant should do the best. I put it there and it didn't do well. And somebody gave me another plant of the same species and I just happened to plant it about 10 feet away and kind of ignored it. And all of a sudden I noticed it was really flourishing. So I learned to put in, if I really like a plant, to put it where I think it should go, but then put in another plant or two, 10 feet either side of it, and see where the plant really wants to grow. And then in your subsequent plantings, to put your plants more in that area. Um, I think the, the, uh, the peak bloom is a good time to see combinations of colors, like our primary colors, uh, the, the yellow of a, a monkey flower combined with the uh, the blue of penstemon and the red of a poppy, or maybe yellow, white, and orange with the, the orange and white being poppies and the yellow being a buckwheat, or uh, a bloom with that shows a lot of pink and uh, sometimes the, the Clarkia uh, pink ribbons blooms a little early and so you can get a uh, pink bloom with uh, Carpentaria and Verbena in the background, get a nice mix of colors. And that's always fun. I think uh, one of the things that's, that I look forward to in the in month of May is, is seeing the baby animals. The, 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 I see my first families of quail usually. And, and, and uh, this month, uh, just as soon as May came along, there was a family with 12 babies running around. And they, they started camping out under one of our verbena plants and would come out each day. Um, we, with mixed feelings, I saw we had a family of brush rabbits this year because I know they eat plants, but they're, they're very cute. And in our pond, we, had, uh, we have baby turtles along with the adults because last year's hatch of turtles is now about three inches long, and they're, they're, they were big enough to put back in the pond with the adults. So the peak bloom is really the time that, we, that I plan for, that I, I look forward to and see how, how people respond to the changes that I might have made. And it's, a, it's a special time in the garden. I hope, hope I've given you some good ideas to think about. Thank you.